What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical, average American here today to react and learn about incredible things to do in British Columbia. I am again making my way, my journey around Canada, looking at all the provinces individually in detail. And today is British Columbia. This is one of those rare provinces that for some reason Americans have heard of? Maybe because it has like a unique name, it has the word British in it. But I swear, there's there's very random provinces Americans know about. And then a couple that we, we've just never heard of ever. And it seems to be totally random. Anyway, let's take a look on the map. British Columbia. This one, I, I'm pretty sure is on the west side of Canada. West on the border. Pretty massive, man. Pretty gigantic. Um, okay. I have my bearings. I know what we're talking about, and I'm ready to experience the incredibleness that is British Columbia. We're in British Columbia, our 11th stop on our 150-day road trip across Canada. Home to high mountains, desert, rainforest, the Pacific Ocean, and world-class cities. What? How? How is Canada like this most majestic place on earth? How can, and how can this province have a rainforests and deserts and mountains and like beautiful beaches? How can, that's not, it's not fair. Desert, rainforest, the Pacific Ocean and world-class cities, British Columbia is one of Canada's most diverse and beautiful provinces. Wow. What the heck? Why does it, how can they be in a tropical paradise and then on the beach? What on earth is this like, is this province just amazing? What? They're basking in the sun. What? Why? <laughs> Why is this like a movie? This is, this is gonna bring a tear to my eye. Why is this so, like, cinematic and, <laughs> oh my gosh. We started our trip in the north, making our way down from the Yukon to Liar Hot Springs, where we took a break to experience the second largest known hot springs in Canada. Wow. With the steam rising off the water, it felt like we were walking through a- Whoa, you know, I've never been to a hot spring or anything like that. But I didn't imagine it looking like this. This is like... The nature, the forest, and the plants are reaching into the hot spring. Like you're one with the forest. I've just thought of it as like some old hot pool sitting in the middle of nowhere. This is like the most awesome hot spring I've ever seen. A jungle in a tropical paradise. What? It's impressive how hot the water gets, and it was a great way to soothe our muscles before wow. beginning the long drive to Vancouver. This is like awesome. This would be like one of the most prioritized destin- I haven't even seen anything else, so I don't know what I'm saying, but this, I like this. Some of the things that make Vancouver one of the most beautiful cities in the world is the variety of parks, beaches, coastline, and natural attractions that can be found all over the city. Okay, yeah, I mean, it goes without saying. That's a big point of British Columbia, Vancouver. The most famous park of them all is Stanley Park, a 400 hectare natural west coast rainforest in the heart of the city. We spent some time hiking through the forest, admiring Beaver Lake, and riding our bikes along the beautiful seawall, a paved pathway that circles the parameter of Stanley Park right next to the ocean. Are, are they saying that there is a full-on rainforest in Vancouver? Is that what we're saying here? That... That's not normal. <laughs> that's, uh, that's amazing, like, okay. This is such a beautiful trail. We got to see incredible views of the city skyline, the Lions Gate Bridge, the Pacific Ocean, and a variety of sandy beaches. Next, we moved to North Vancouver to walk across Capilano Suspension Bridge, a 460 foot long oh. suspension bridge that sits 230 feet over a scenic river. <laughs> I feel, ah oh man, I feel like I've seen this bridge somewhere. 
possibly in a different YouTube video, this suspension bridge. I like how it's 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 clearly like safe, but just just dangerous enough where it's like kind of exciting. While the bridge itself is a major tourist attraction, there's lots of other things to do in the area as well, including a canopy walk and a cliff walk. Oh, After wow. exploring some of Vancouver's natural attractions, we moved into the city. Start no, no, no. Stop. Stop right there. This is good. This is good. I said the hot spring was good, but this little canopy walk being up high like this in the forest. This is... Wow. This is not what I was expecting. Like, not that I really had an expectation for British Columbia, but this is just like exceeding anything I could have thought. This, why is it just everything is spectacular? Starting with Robson Street and then Gastown, Vancouver's oldest district. Here, we found an array of beautiful buildings, cobblestone streets, and even an old steam clock. Oh, cool. We also took a walking tour to learn about the days of Prohibition, the opium riots, and some of Vancouver's darkest days. Huh. It was a great way to learn about the early beginnings of this great city. Okay. That's cool. The next day, we continued to learn about the area by visiting the Museum of Anthropology, which uh, houses thousands of artifacts from the Northwest Coast First Nations, as well as other cultures from all over the world. Oh, wow. Some of this, mu some of this museum is like outdoors, like an outdoor museum. Wait, are you allowed to touch the priceless artifacts? Because he's touching them. <laughs> it was impressive to see the collections of artwork and to go through some of the interactive exhibits that introduced us to various art forms, such as Japanese calligraphy. Wow. Interactive. After a couple of days in Vancouver, we took the ferry to Vancouver Island, an area known for its wilderness and adventure. We started in Victoria, BC's capital city. Named after Queen Victoria of the United Kingdom, Victoria is a beautiful coastal city with a variety of heritage homes, wow. legislated buildings, and a vibrant food scene. Oh, to yes. get a better taste of the city, we took a walking food tour through the heart of the city. <laughs> a walking, a food tour. A food tour. Now we're talking. Now we're, you know, we just uh, went out on our little hot spring adventure, went through the canopies, uh, through the shipyard. It's time for a food tour. Including the second oldest Chinatown in North America. Not only did we learn so much about Victoria's history, but we got to try delicious food, such as premium olive oils, pierogies, meatballs. Hold on, what, what was this? Why, what, you put it on a little spoon? Try delicious food, such as- I don't, <laughs> I don't feel like they thought anyone was gonna pause it on this part, but like, what's going on here? Are, are they tasting, is this like an olive oil tasting party? On a tiny little tasting spoon? That's fancy. Premium olive oils. Oh, huh. Pierogies, meatballs, Italian baked goods, and the famous Victoria cream chocolates, which are sent to the Queen of England every year. And in the evening, we went to an in-house group pub where we got to try a beer and chocolate truffle pairing. It was the What? How? <laughs> All right, not, they're not only doing like the coolest stuff in British Columbia. They're doing like the fanciest stuff I've ever seen, like this gourmet chocolate tasting and the beers. Goodness, this is, I don't know how expensive this is, but it might be worth it because this is, this is like the vacation of a lifetime in this video. This is like British Columbia, the movie. Like, oh my God. Delicious. Victoria is also known as the Garden City which is quite apparent as you're walking around the streets. However, the most magnificent garden of them all is the Boucher Gardens, which is now a national historic site of Canada. Oh, hold on. Hold on, everyone. Adobe pop-up. We got an Adobe pop-up ruining the experience. All right, we're back. With over 900 varieties of plants, we could quickly see why this has become a world-famous attraction. It was so impressive to look down at the sunken garden, Oh wow, little garden, flower garden. This is nice. You know, not necessarily, not necessarily some something someone like me would think. Like I, I wouldn't come up with like, oh, let's go to the beautiful garden. But if you dragged me there, I would be like, you know what? I'm glad you dragged me here. This is nice. View the various water fountains. Step through the peaceful Japanese garden. Walk through the rose garden and admire the hard work and passion that went into this 55-acre garden. Cool. 
Next, Very it was time nice. to explore the island's wild side. We started the adventure off in Port Renfrew, which is nestled between the famous West Coast Trail and Juan de Fuca Trail. Okay. Here we hiked to Botanical Beach to see the beautiful tidal pools and to Sombrio Beach where we found a small trail leading to a spectacular waterfall. What? Now we're exploring waterfalls and caves? I've never seen so many ecosystems in one place. Now I understand they're traveling around British Columbia, but even still. The water may have been cold, but that didn't stop us from taking the chance to go into the waterfall. I mean, oh. it's a waterfall <laughs> in the middle of the rainforest. How could you not? <laughs> Okay. Another thing Vancouver Island is known for is whale watching. So we jumped on a boat, cruised out in the Pacific Ocean, and had one of the best whale watching tours of our lives. Really? First we saw dozens of orca whales breaching the surface with their amazing black dorsal fins pointing out of the water to the wow. backdrop of the mystic west coast. What? We even saw them jump right out of the water, something we've never seen before. Whale watching? I, that's like th so much stuff that I've never even thought about. But it's so obvious, once you think about it. Whale watching, zipping around in a boat, watching incredible whales. Sounds cool, honestly. Then, as if that wasn't special enough, we came across a massive meeting of humpback whales. We must have seen between 50 to 70 of them breaching the water, what? showing us their huge tails, and swimming right next to the boat. What an wow. unbelievable experience. That, that actually is awesome. Like, that actually is a once-in-a-lifetime... Well, I guess you could just go back and do it again. But you you get what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, that's like an unforgettable, like, if seeing whales. I've never done anything remotely close to that. Next on our island journey was Campbell River. And after visiting the beautiful Elk Falls, we went on a tour to see grizzly bears in their natural habitat. This started with a boat trip through beautiful mountain scenery, what does she mean went on a tour to see grizzly bears in their natural habitat? They're going to like willingly go into where the grizzly bears live and see them and just like hope that the grizzly bears are cool with it? Or how does this work? We saw humpbacks and orcas before arriving to the Butte Inlet and the home of the Homalco First Nation. Thanks to the salmon swimming up the inlet to their spawning grounds, grizzlies arrive here by the dozens, eating salmon to fatten up for the winter. It was incredible how what? close we got to the bears, and we even saw one catching a salmon right out of the river. What? Well, I guess they're in a boat. That's how you do it? You stay in your boat and look at them from afar? Well, they got this video, and this is like not that far away. They might have zoomed in, but... Like she said, they got pretty close. Uh, that's amazing. An awesome experience we'll never forget. The next day, we had the opportunity to go snorkeling with the salmon. First, we hiked to a nearby canyon where tens of thousands of them swam around us. And then we what? went down the river with them, letting the current take us up and over rocks and back into town. This is truly a unique way to get into nature. Wow. Next, we drove to Tafina. Uh, which one? Whoever came up with like this travel itinerary um of everything so far is like a genius level this is some of the coolest stuff i've ever seen you know, stopping at a couple of beautiful waterfalls as well as cathedral grove to marvel at the massive 800 year old douglas firs oh standing over 250 feet tall with a circumference of over 29 feet we couldn't even come close <laughs> to wrapping our arms around. <laughs> that is a tree right there that is a tree wow these are like you can just go to british columbia and get so many like first experiences of so many different things, including hugging a massive tree. Around it. Walking through this ancient rainforest felt like we were in Jurassic Park, and it's one of the things I love most about the island. Yeah. Once in Tofino, we couldn't live without trying one of the activities that makes it so famous, surfing. After oh. a great lesson, we spent hours catching little waves and riding them back to shore. It was such an exhilarating experience to be able to stand up and feel the power of the waves push us forward. Okay. We surfed all the way until sunset before marveling at the sky as it turned red, pink, and orange. An amazing way to finish our time here in this beautiful place. That's cool. After Tofino, we drove to Nanaimo, continuing our adventures on the water by fishing for salmon and crab for the first time. Not only did we catch some crab, but we got to bring it home and cook it for dinner. What a fresh and delicious meal. 
The next day, we jumped back in the water to go snorkeling with playful what? seals. And after what? <laughs> snorkeling with the seals, of course. Like this trip couldn't get any more whimsical. Look at this thing. Look at him. He's like, what the heck is going on? After having them nibble on our fins, we strapped on our scuba diving gear and dove down to 60 feet to get a what? whole new perspective of ocean life. We saw so much interesting sea life, including wolf what? whales and a- What? What is that? I, I'm gonna be honest, I would turn around and swim away. I would not be shining my light in whatever these things are faces. I don't care if they're friendly. <laughs> they're scaring me. The swimming scallop, which swims through the water when you touch it. This was our first time diving in Canada and we loved every minute of it. Finally, to cap off our time on Vancouver Island, we signed up for a bungee jump and a primal swing experience. What? First, we got a strap into the primal swing and swung 140 kilometers per hour through a canyon. <laughs> what? <laughs> They're just doing everything. Like, okay, I, I guess I should have expected. Uh, yeah, we, we dived with the seals and then we bungee jumped off this bridge. You know, normal fun stuff. We had the ultimate adrenaline rush. A 150 cool, foot bungee jump. Trapped by the ankles, we courageously took the leap, falling towards the ground with nothing but a few thousand elastic bands keeping us safe. Oh my God. Words cannot describe the feeling of freedom that we <laughs> felt falling through the air and the sense of accomplishment when it's all said and done. That's cool. We then made our way back to Vancouver and drove to Kelowna, the largest city of the Okanagan Valley. This is one of Canada's best wine regions, and a winery tour is something that you shouldn't miss. Wow. We had the opportunity to visit an organic biodynamic winery, which not only- Okay, I, now we're talking about like some bio-organic winery. This is kind of like olive oil tasting and gourmet chocolate tasting. I don't know if I'd ever personally think to like go to a winery, but it's probably much more interesting than I realize. Not only produces great tasting wines, but does so in a way that's harmonious with earth. We were so impressed with the facility and everything we learned about the various crops that can be grown in conjunction with grapes. Okay. Another thing the area is known for is Okanagan Lake, a massive 135 kilometer long lake that dominates the valley of Kelowna and other nearby towns. Wow. To really enjoy the lake, we jumped on a boat to tour the city by water before strapping on a flyboard, utilizing the water to launch ourselves into the air. What? It was such a cool experience. What? They are not, they are not flying through the air with this water hoverboard right now. They are not. Experience to hover over the water. And even though we crashed a few times, once we got the hang of it, it was <laughs> such a blast. One of our favorite. You know, some of these things, obviously you can do anywhere but I don't care. <laughs> They're doing it in British Columbia. It's awesome. <laughs> they are, a, these, these, this, this YouTube channel, these two people, they are some adventurers, aren't they? Whipping out the, the hoverboard. ...activities was getting into a helicopter and getting a bird's eye view of the lake, the mountains, the various wineries, and the beautiful canyons that can be found just outside the city. Cool. We loved exploring Kelowna and experiencing some of the wine culture as well as other cool activities such as axe throwing, something we've never considered trying before. <laughs> we were so surprised by how much fun it was. With our time yeah. running out in BC, we made our way east to the mountains, stopping in Revelstoke to ride the Pipe Mountain Coaster, an exciting and scenic ride that brought us down the mountain and through the forest. Oh, I love that. These are so awesome. Uh, I've been on something like this when I was a little kid. These <laughs> these are a little dangerous. Again, that's part of the that's that's part of it. Part of the fun. As long as you don't get flung off the track or flung off your cart. It's like a roller coaster in the mountain. This is awesome. While having fun and allowing us to take in the breathtaking views. Last but not least, we enter the Canadian Rockies, stopping at Johor National Park to see beautiful Emerald Lake. Wow. As you can see, British Columbia has no shortage of incredible and varied scenery, attractions, nature, and adventure. We did so much and barely scratched the surface. From lush rainforest to rugged what? coastline, to deserts, lakes, and mountains, British Columbia is one of the most beautiful places in Canada, if not the entire world. 
Yeah. Thank you so much for watching our British Columbia episode. To learn more about what we did in BC as well as other provinces during our 150 day road trip across Canada, visit mustdocanada.com. Oh my gosh. That was a lot. You know, uh, I like looking at these videos. I really enjoy the ones that are like showing all these amazing parts of Canada and all the provinces. All of it is stuff I've never seen ever before or even heard about. This one was like, probably just because this, this video was so well done. This was by Must Do Canada. And I have to give it a like. I really liked it. This made British Columbia seem like the best place ever on earth to vacation to. And I know some of that is just because they did the work and they found like amazing activities to do. But some of the locations like the caves and the forests and the cities are obviously unique to British Columbia. So you do, you, they are only found there. And then you just also include all these amazing sort of <laughs> expensive <laughs> other things, but nonetheless worth it activities. And you have like one of the most amazing experiences I've ever seen in a video. I felt like I was there. Incredible, genuinely. Wow. Anyway, uh, if you enjoyed this reaction, uh, feel free to give this video a like or, or leave a comment. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to Canada, Canadian culture, stuff in Canada that I've never seen, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.